Hey, good morning. Welcome to our online service. We're glad that you're tuned in with us today. Let's go ahead and center our hearts on Jesus. Let's submit this time to him. So let's go ahead and pray. Father, thanks for this opportunity to gather together virtually. And we just pray that you administer to each one of us. We do pray for our nation today. In the midst of everything that happened this past week, Lord, we pray for your peace. We pray for unity. And we just declare that you are in charge, you are sovereign, and you are in control. Even when we feel like things are out of control in our nation or things are out of control in our lives, you are still in control. You're still on the throne. And that's why we just place our hope, our trust in you. God, guide this time today. May we be deeply encouraged as we worship together, as we go to your word. And so we just pray your blessing upon this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, a couple of announcements before we start worship in song. We are starting signups for our small groups for the spring. So I want to encourage you. Today is the first day of sign up. So go ahead and sign up for a small group so we could get together in Christian community, encourage each other, and sharpen each other. You can sign up on the Church Center app or at vineyardofharvest.org slash groups. I also want to remind you to sign in, check in on the Church Center app um, if you haven't done so already. It just helps us to keep track of who's we can go into our service and, and so we can follow with people, etc. So thanks for those of you who've done it. If you haven't done so already, check in on our Church Center app. Finally, I want to remind you to give. You can give um, securely and quickly at vineyardofharvest.org slash give or through our Church Center app. And I just want to encourage you. We're making a difference. We are spreading the gospel message. In these times that we're living in that are crazy, the gospel message needs to go out. And we are getting the gospel message out here locally, and we're getting the gospel message out internationally. So I want to tell you that you are sowing good seed into the kingdom of God as you give to the local church. Thank you so much to those who have been giving. Um, God is pleased with our generous and cheerful hearts as we give to him and build his kingdom. Let's go ahead and spend some time. Let's worship the Lord in song as the worship team leads us. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings and who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you will take my place that you would bear my cross you lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory and who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I 
Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Sing how worthy. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And worthy is the King who conquered the grave. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And worthy is the King who conquered the grave. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And worthy is the King who conquered the grave. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, 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 oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Times amazing. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. to 
this mortal frustration And I'm not gonna give death any standing ovation And I will lift my soul, God, with no hesitation Cause between you and me there is no separation in winter I believe you in springtime I see you It's so good to be with you My hope has come Lord you make all things new Your love is my breakthrough now I sing hallelujah, my hope has So our vision for 2021 is extend an invitation. We are extending invitations to others to have encounters with Jesus, to receive the gospel message. And we've been going through a sermon series at the beginning of the year with that name, extend an invitation. Today is actually the last day of the series. Of course, we're going to be championing the vision of extended invitation all through the year, but today will be the last day of this series. And so today I'm preaching a message entitled an invitation to transfer burdens. So let me start off with an illustration and really it's three hypothetical situations. So think about what your response would be to these three hypothetical situations. So first hypothetical situation is that I ask you to help me to carry over this binder across the street. So I tell you, you know, I'll grab one end, you grab the other end. Let's, let's go ahead and do this together and get this binder across the street. That's the first hypothetical situation. Second hypothetical situation is I say, would you help me to move this table, you know, with this computer and Bible and, and all these other things here, um, help me to get this table over to the other side of the street. I grab one side, you grab the other side, we'll get it over to the other side. Um, and then the third hypothetical situation is this building that I'm in, the Harvest Building. So I say, okay, let's get this building to the other side of the street. I'll grab one side, you grab the other side, and we'll walk over together. I think I can predict your responses to these three hypothetical situations. To this first situation, I think you would be a bit surprised that I'm asking you to help me with this. You would say to me, Dennis, I, you can do this by yourself. You don't need my help. You can uh, carry this over by yourself. To this second uh, scenario, I think you would help me. You would see this is kind of bulky. It'd be clumsy for me to get this over by myself and you grab one side i grab the other side we would be able to get it over a lot better so i think you would help me with this one the third one i think you would be just shocked that i'm asking you it's like dennis this is impossible you know we cannot carry this building over the other side even if even if we had 100 people we wouldn't be able to carry it over to the other side of the street and you would say you know this is beyond human ability this is beyond human strength to carry this building over to the other side of the street I wanted to say today that the Bible actually has something to say about these three scenarios. Galatians 6.5 tells us that we are to carry our own load. We are to uh, be able to carry our, our, the responsibilities that we have and uh, work, work those out. Galatians chapter 6 also says that we are to carry each other's burdens. So we are to help each other out, like this situation with this table. Things that we can't do on our own, God gives us each other to help us out. But then the Bible also talks about certain burdens that are beyond human strength, like this carrying this building. And he speaks into that. And Jesus, actually in today's passage, issues us an invitation. In the midst of burdens that are beyond our own strength, beyond human strength, Jesus issues us an invitation. So the question that we're answering today is, what invitation does Jesus extend to us in the midst of burdens beyond human strength. So let's look at a very key passage of scripture, Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30, to see the invitation that Jesus extends. Let's read it together. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let me read verse 28 
Again, because we'll start unpacking from there. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. There's an invitation from Jesus to come to him, to go to Jesus. And he promises us that he will give us rest. Now, you might ask, how is Jesus going to take our burdens? Or how is he going to give us rest? And I want to point us to another passage of scripture. Actually, this passage of scripture we've been in because it's a famous Christmas passage. Actually, in our Christmas Eve service, we looked at this passage. Isaiah 9, verse 6. How would Jesus take our burdens? Why would we go to Jesus with our burdens? Isaiah 9, verse 6. I'm reading first from the NIV. It says, describing Jesus. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. By the way, this is a good word for this week in the midst of everything that's going on in our nation, in the midst of the burden that our nation is carrying. It says that Jesus, about Jesus, that the government will be on his shoulders. The message version, I think, puts it really well. It says, for a child has been born for us, the gift of a son for us, he'll take over the running of the world. If it's the building that we need to carry, if it's other burdens that we need to carry that are beyond human strength, Jesus says that he could take on the weight of the world. He could take over the running of the world. That's good news, that we literally call it good news. So let me put it like this for point number one. What invitation does Jesus extend to us in the midst of burdens beyond human strength? To transfer burdens to his shoulders. I feel like that's a good word for us in this season in our nation situation, in our world situation, in our personal situations. Let me tell you about an experience that I had on Tuesday that I think really spoke to me about how needed this word is about transferring our burdens to Jesus' shoulders. So this past Tuesday, me and Evangeline brought our four-year-old daughter, Jubilee, to Children's Hospital in Los Angeles. Many of you know we've been sharing that, we've been monitoring Jubilee's hearing ever since she was a newborn. And so we brought her to um, a specialist at, at CHLA on Tuesday, the ear, nose, and throat specialist. And so when we went there, obviously we saw lots of parents um, with their kids. Some of their kids were very sick. And ev- obviously everyone had masks on, and so you could only see people's eyes. And so as we're walking around the hospital, I was noticing the eyes of all these parents who have brought their sick kids, some of them very sick, the children's hospital, and I could literally see the burdens, the weariness in their eyes. And as I saw that look, I saw the look in their eyes of of the burden, I was thinking, man, that's a familiar look. I've seen those eyes before, even outside of children's hospital. When I think about the conversations I've had with people these days over Zoom or in person, I see the burdens in, in people's eyes with the work from home dynamic, with the work from home dynamic, added to the family dynamic, with COVID, with the surge of COVID cases, with some of us um, navigating uh, family members and and loved ones with with COVID, et cetera, with the, the political tensions in our country, especially this week. This is a good word for us in this season, with the burdens that we are navigating in our lives and in our world, to transfer the burdens to Jesus's shoulders. So the next question would be, okay, this is great. We, you know, we get to transfer our burdens to Jesus' shoulders. But how? How do we transfer our burdens to Jesus' shoulders? So let's look at verse 29, or the first portion of verse 29, of how we can transfer our burdens to him. It says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Now, I want to say, when we first look at that imagery of taking a yoke upon ourselves, as probably not very appealing, right? It's not very appealing that we have to put a yoke upon ourselves. But because of that second portion, it becomes appealing that we are learning from Jesus. The invitation is to take on Jesus's yoke in order to learn from him. The image here is of a young untrained ox attached to an older trained ox. And it's the older trained ox that's really doing the heavy work. Is really do is carrying the lo- the load, the carrying the burdens, if I could put it that way. And and the tra- the the older trained ox is the one that's leading a couple of steps out, and um, is the one setting the pace, setting the direction, and really the only thing that the younger untrained ox needs to do is just keep in step with the older trained ox, not even to carry much 
of the burden. That's why it says in verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Our part is simply to stay in step with the master, with Jesus, the so-called older trained ox. Let me put it like this for point number two. What invitation does Jesus extend to us in the midst of burdens beyond human strength? Point number two, to learn from Jesus by walking in step with him. Now this takes intentionality, would you agree? It takes intentionality to put on the yoke. It takes intentionality to walk in step. And as an example, I just wanted to share my experience this past week um, with the online devotional that we've been going through, the He Reached Truth for Men, the She Reached Truth for Women. And it's been great. For those of you who've been engaging, I think you would agree. We're taking in multiple chunks of scripture on the same topic, one spiritual discipline every single day. Um, We're going to God's word. There's rich commentary that's there for us. And, And this helps us to stay in step with God by going to his word every single day. I wanna encourage you, if you haven't joined in to a devotional plan yet, if you ha- don't have your own, I, there's, still, there's still time. We're, we're doing this from January 4th all the way to January 31st. And so the instructions are on this graphic, but also there's the, the step-by-step instructions that are on our social media, that are in our online bulletin. So if you don't have a devotional plan yet, I just encourage you, let's find ways to get in step with Jesus because that's the way that we would transfer our burdens over to him. Also, today starts the day that we are signing up for our spring small groups. That's another way that you could stay in step with Jesus, by staying in fellowship, by staying um, connected to the local church, by staying connected to Christian community, that we could sharpen each other and encourage each other. But the point that this passage is making today is that we are to transfer our burdens to Jesus. And how? By staying in step with Jesus so that we could learn from him. That's how we would transfer our burdens over to him. Now, you might ask, okay, we need to stay in step with Jesus and we need to learn from him. Is there something specific that Jesus wants me to learn from him? And I want to point out in this passage that there is. So verse 29, this is the second portion. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Let me point out the, uh, the second portion of this phrase. It says, for I am gentle and humble in heart. That's something that Jesus wants us to learn from him. Let me share two other translations of this one phrase that I think will bring clarity to what Jesus is trying to communicate. The New King James Version says that Jesus is gentle and lowly in heart. And then the message translation says, live freely and lightly. It makes me think of lower blood pressure in a pressurized society. It makes me think of a heart at ease, a heart that's light and free. Jesus is calling us to follow him, stay in step with him, that our blood pressure gets lowered, so that even in a pressurized society, so that our hearts are at ease, light, and free. That's why it says it this way in the, in the last portion of the phrase. It says, you will find rest for your souls. Rest is the landing point of this passage. I think you would agree that the word rest appears two times in this very short passage. Jesus invites us to rest in him, to have hearts that are light and free and at ease as we transfer our burdens over to him. Let me put it like this for point number three. What invitation does Jesus extend to us in the midst of burdens beyond human strength? To rest our souls in him with our hearts at ease. You know, I I think you would agree that this world that we live in doesn't value rest. This world that we live in is, would even say about rest, if, if, if we're resting, that we're lazy. This world is about go, 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 and faster, faster, faster. But Jesus, in his upside down kingdom, is calling us to rest ourselves in him. That's his invitation to us. And many of you know that I've been challenged and convicted in the last couple of years about this biblical principle of rest and Sabbath. And I've really been championing that in our church and in our church community. But I was even more challenged and convicted at the end of last year, at the end of 2020. Carmel Bruce, one of our staff members, sent me a blog post that really challenged and convicted me um, about this topic, even more about rest and about Sabbath. So I wanna read just a really short excerpt of this blog post 
and hopefully you can be convicted and challenged in this as well. So this blog post is by a guy named Nate Johnston and um, the, the banner or the heading of the blog post said, I heard the Lord say, if you lean into my rest, there will be clarity, direction, and miracle working power. And then the short excerpt in this blog post is, he was looking for people that weren't already too busy or had their hands too full because there were going to be unexpected opportunities and assignments that he would be giving. Do you believe that? That there's actually opportunities and assignments that God wants to download to people. And he's looking throughout the world to see people who have margin in their life, who have capacity in their life, who have rest in their life, that he would download to them the opportunities, the assignments. I say, and I add anointing into their lives. See, it's kind of like, like we have this uh, container in our lives and we need to dump out those burdens. Jesus is inviting us to dump out those burdens to him, transfer those burdens to him, get in step with him, learn from him. And he's, he's, he's asking us to do that. Why? Because he wants to download to us opportunities, assignments, anointing. I always end our sermon time with two reflection questions or a couple of reflection questions. And today there's two. So I want to share that with you so that we can respond to God's word. So the first reflection question is, do you have burdens you need to transfer to Jesus? How can you get more in step with Jesus so the burdens get transferred to him? Maybe it's the devotional app. Maybe it's another devotional resource from somewhere else. Maybe it's signing up for a small group. Maybe it's confession of sin. Maybe it is is getting involved in in serving God in some, some capacity. But what is it for you? What is Holy Spirit speaking to you? How can you get more in step with Jesus that you learn from him and you transfer burdens to him? That's a first reflection question. Second reflection question is, how can you extend this invitation to others to enter God's rest? Of course, this invitation is for us today. It's for all of us to enter into God's rest. But we also want to invite others. That's why this is our vision this year of extend an invitation. That's why we're, we're, we're to go and share with people and invite people to Sunday service, invite people to join our small groups, invite people to hear the gospel message from us, that the landing point would be that they're entering into God's rest, that they will have rest for their souls in this weary and burdened world that we live in. What is a way that you can extend an invitation to others this week to enter into God's rest? Let's take a few moments. Let's reflect as some worship, worship music plays in the background and let's respond and reflect to God's word for us this morning. out service with a benediction, a blessing. So if you feel comfortable, put your hands out, palms up to heaven, receive God's blessing as we close out. Father, I just bless each and every person and each and every family. Lord, you know the burdens that we are navigating. And I pray that you would help us to transfer them over to you by keeping in step with Jesus this week, learning from you, 
And I pray that we would enter into deep rest for our souls this week. So blessings on each person and each family represented. We pray that you would guide us this week for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you guys. Have a great week, and I'll see you next Sunday. Receive all